Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today we're going to talk a little bit about how atoms release energy in the form of light and then we're going to take a look at some emission spectrums. Okay, so when you go to that 4th of July fireworks show and you see all of those pretty colors, what is happening there? Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. We're, we are going to talk about how atoms emit energy in the form of light. So let's suppose we have a little lithium atom and this lithium atom consists of three electrons it has one little valence electron here and if we take a look at this lithium atom right here it is currently in the ground state okay a ground state lithium atom what that means is that all of the electrons are occupying their lowest possible energy levels okay so all atoms want to be in a ground state and this lithium atom right now is in a ground state but if we pass electricity through this little uh, uh, lithium atom or if we heat this uh, lithium atom up it's going to enter a or an excited state okay so we have a ground state lithium atom right here and we have an excited uh, state lithium atom right here and if we pay very close attention what we'll notice is that the valence electron in the excited state lithium atom here has jumped to a higher energy level it has jumped to the third energy level if you want to consider it that way so this little valence electron has jumped to the uh, uh to an outer energy level and that is exactly what happens when atoms get excited when atoms get excited what ends up happening is their electrons start to jump up to higher energy levels okay so we have an excited lithium atom here and here's the thing about excited atoms they want to be in a ground state okay they feel much more comfortable with being in a ground state and having an electron configuration that looks like this right here so what ends up happening is that this electron that is now in an outer energy level or a higher energy level is going to jump back down it's going to jump back down into this energy level right here and what ends up happening when it does that is that it's going to have to release a certain amount of energy it's going to have to release energy in order to go from an excited state back down to a ground state and this energy that it releases comes in the form of light a form of electromagnetic radiation okay so as this excited lithium atom goes back down to a ground state what ends up happening is this electron here moves back down to a lower energy level and it's going to release a photon of red light okay so little photons are released okay remember that photons are a form of electromagnetic energy or radiation and this little photon here has a certain amount of energy and if we wanted to measure that we can quite simply do that in an earlier video we learned that to figure out how much energy this little photon has we're going to take Planck's constant multiply it by the frequency and we'll find that this little red photon of light has low energy uh, associated with it okay so that's what's happening there that's what's happening when we see uh, the fireworks show on the 4th of July what we're seeing are a bunch of different types of atoms that are entering into an excited state due to the different little uh, explosions that you might see and then those uh, little electrons are going to jump up into higher energy levels and they don't want to be in this excited state they would rather be in a ground state so these little electrons are then going to jump back down into lower energy levels and the way they do that uh, they're going to have to release uh, energy or different photons of light. And so what you see at the fireworks show is you'll see your greens uh, typically being copper. And uh, the green light is associated with high energy photons that are being emitted, emitted by those copper atoms. And you have strontium and lithium being red, which are associated with low energy photons of light all right so that's how atoms emit light and that's how atoms tie into uh, the electromagnetic spectrum and the visible light spectrum and uh, electromagnetic radiation and waves okay so now let's take a look at uh, uh, the flame test and see what's going on with that okay so knowing that atoms can emit light or energy in the form of different uh, or energy in the form of light and knowing that that energy can come in different uh, well different amounts of energy right high energy or low energy what we can do or what scientists or chemists can do and you've probably seen this in uh, your chemistry class is we can do a flame test okay a flame test is an analytical procedure uh, used in chemistry to detect the presence of certain elements primarily metal ions and so what ends up happening is you have a Bunsen burner right here and there's nothing placed in this Bunsen burner this is just a flame but when you start placing these different 
metal ions or metallic compounds containing arsenic or calcium or copper or potassium or sodium or strontium or other uh, metallic ions, uh, what you'll end up seeing is that they emit different colors of, of light, which correspond to different, uh, different amounts of energy. For example, when we take arsenic or arsenic compounds and we put it in this flame, it's going to emit this little blue flame right here. And blue uh, wavelengths or frequencies of light are associated with higher uh, energies, right? Whereas if we put calcium or a calcium compound into this flame, it's going to be brick red. So these calcium atoms are releasing energy in the form of light, and this light happens to be red. And red is a low energy uh, photon of light, okay? If we take a look at copper, copper is typically green, which is associated with a high energy photon of light being released. If we take a look at potassium, we have lilac. If we take a look at sodium, like sodium lamps, uh, that maybe you see in the Walmart parking lot at night, those are going to release yellow photons of light, which are kind of medium range energy or medium energy photons that are being emitted from this sodium atoms right here. And last but not least, we have strontium right here. All right, so the flame test just shows us the different amounts of energy or the different photons that are released from the different atoms, and those photons uh, correspond to a different amount of energy. All right, so what we can do now is we can actually take a look at atoms' emission spectrums. And uh, an emission spectrum is basically an atom's fingerprint. All right, for example, if we take a look at hydrogen, here is the emission spectrum for hydrogen. All right, so when we excite hydrogen, what ends up happening is that the, the electron in hydrogen is going to jump up to a higher energy level. And then when it goes from an excited state back down to a ground state, it's going to start to release uh, energy in the form of light. And we can see here that some of that energy is going to come in the form of red photons of light. Some of that energy is going to come in the form of this light blue photon of light. And we have some what appears to be uh, indigo photons of light and we have uh, this blue dark blue photon of light as well okay so you might be saying to yourself well how can we uh, don't only see one little line since hydrogen only has one little electron well that's a good question and so when we take a look at this hydrogen we are talking about the elemental hydrogen it's not just one little atom it's comprised of billions if not trillions of hydrogen atoms and some of those are releasing red photons of light some of them are releasing uh, uh, this light blue photon of light this dark blue photon of light and this indigo or violet photon of light that we see right here which are all corresponding to different amounts of energy okay so this is the fingerprint of hydrogen right this is the emission spectrum of hydrogen if we take a look at helium this is a little bit different we have yellow photons of light that are being emitted and we have uh, other little photons of light that are being emitted over here all right so this is the fingerprint or emission spectrum for helium and if we take a look at boron right here here's another emission spectrum for boron, we have uh, red photons of light being released by boron atoms. We have orange photons of light being released by boron atoms, etc., etc. Okay, so this is like a fingerprint. And we use emission spectrums to determine the types of atoms that are in distant stars, light years, many, many light years away. Okay, we collect that light in a telescope and we're able to determine what elements make up distant stars that are hundreds of millions of light years away based on the emission spectrums, based on the, the atom's little fingerprint here. Okay, so understand how emission spectrums work for the different atoms. All right, so if you take a, a, a few moments to just pause this, this video and we can take a look at, uh, or you can take a look at the emission spectrum of alkali metals and alkaline earth metals. So here are the alkali metals right here, lithium all the way down to cesium. And here are the alkaline earth metals over here from beryllium all the way down to barium. And what we can see if you pause this video, you can take a look at all the emission spectrums for the different elements here. For example, here's lithium, right? We have red, uh, I'm sorry, we have green photons of light being emitted. We have red photons. We have uh, orange photons of light being emitted being emitted if we take a look at sodium right all these different little photons of light are being emitted from elemental sodium all these little photons of light are being emitted uh, in elemental potassium as those uh, atoms go from being in, a, in an excited state down to a ground state releasing different photons of light on the way 
All right, so go ahead and pause this little video at this moment here and just take a look at the different little emission spectrums for the alkali and alkaline earth metals. Okay, so that's uh, atomic emission of light and uh, emission spectrums in a nutshell. And understand that atoms can release energy in the form of light. And the different colors that you see are actually being associated with different amounts of energy right your red light is going to be low energy photons of light whereas your purple and violets are going to be your uh, higher energy uh, photons of light okay so if you like what you see here go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and feel free to leave any comments in the comments section down below or any questions that you might have as well and i hope this was helpful